In this video, I will tell you about making ellipses in AutoCAD. So, ellipse is a simple mathematical curve and in AutoCAD, you can make it directly with the ellipse tool. So, on the draw panel, when you expand this flyout, you will see that we have this ellipse tool and you can make it using these two options. We also have an elliptical arc that also will look in this video. So, I will start with a simple ellipse. Now, as you can see that in this ellipse, we need to enter three different points so for making this ellipse we need to start with the center point that will be the first point as mentioned in this fly out here and then we need to enter the second point that will be the end point of one of the axes and then the third point which will be the end point of another axis so we'll do this on this geometry so i'll select this center and ellipse now obviously we need to specify the center point as mentioned on the command line so we need to specify the center of ellipse so that center point will be point b in this geometry now we need to specify the end point of ellipse and we can take the end point as point c or point a so let's take this point c as the end point of one of the axis and now you'll notice that our ellipse is changing shape along with the cursor and you can simply specify the next end point of the minor or major axis so here we can specify the next endpoint of the axis as this point or we can also specify this point as the axis endpoint but first we'll click at this point here and that will be the axis endpoint and here we have it so now the a b c are the points on the major axis where a c is the major axis and these two points are of minor axis now if major axis and minor axis have equal length then that will make a simple circle so now let's erase this ellipse and let's select the second method which is axis end now in this case we need to specify the two end points of the axis so i'll select the a point as first axis end point and then point c as the second axis end point and now we need to again specify the end point of another axis so here in this case i am again selecting this point and here we have it so the only difference between these two ellipses is in the first case we need to specify the center and then end point but in the second case we have to specify the two end points so now let's erase this one as well so now let's have a look at the elliptical arc so for that i'll once again go to the fly out and here we have this elliptical arc option so let's select it and now in this case also we need to first make the ellipse and then we'll convert it into an arc so here as you can see that we need to specify the end point of the ellipse alternatively you can also click on the center option here on the command line to start the ellipse from the center point so i'll click on the center and then click on the center point and now the end point of one of the axis and here we have the ellipse so now we need to specify the second end point and now the ellipse has been made but in this case the command is still active and now you need to start the angle for elliptical arc so click anywhere in the drawing area and that will be the starting point for our elliptical arc and as you can see that now our elliptical arc is being made from that point and now you can click at any other point to end the elliptical arc or you can also add the included angle directly on the command line so i'll simply click here and here we have it the elliptical arc which is simply a part of this complete ellipse so in this way we can make ellipses and elliptical arc in autocad in this video i'll tell you about making rectangles in autocad so we've already seen the simple methods of making rectangle using the line tool but we have a direct method of making rectangles in autocad as well and that's using the rectangle tool so here we have this rectangle tool on the draw panel and when you expand the fly out you'll see the rectangle tool here now select the rectangle tool and now you need to specify the first point for making the rectangle and you can specify the first point as 0 comma 0 that will be the origin in this case and you can see that the rectangle starts from the first point at origin now look at the cursor which is at this vertex of the rectangle and now when you look at the command line you'll see that it's prompting you to specify the other corner point and that is this corner point on which we have our cursor right now so all you need to do is enter the coordinates of this point so let's say that we want to make a rectangle with length 10 and width 5 so in that case the coordinates of this point will be 10 comma 5 and now press enter and here we have it the rectangle with length 
10 units and width 5 units so now in this case we made this rectangle from the origin that's why it was very easy for us to make a rectangle with this kind of length and width but what if we make the same rectangle not from the origin so i'll start the rectangle and click anywhere in the drawing area to make the rectangle and that will be the first point now we again need to make another rectangle with length of 10 and width of 5 units but in this case i'll simply enter 10 comma 5 and now look at the results and instead of making a rectangle with length 10 and width 5 the next rectangle simply snap to the same point which was 10 comma 5 so in this case we need to change some parameters so now i'll erase this rectangle and i'll start the rectangle tool now again i'll click anywhere in the drawing area and now obviously if you want to make a rectangle with length of 10 and width of 5 in such a way that it does not start from the origin then you need to add this add sign so this add sign will tell autocad that the origin point is this one the original point on which we have clicked to start this rectangle and now simply enter length comma 5 that is width and press enter and here we have it the rectangle with length 10 and width 5 unit so whenever you need to make a rectangle you need to simply enter add sign and then length and then width so that will make the rectangle of desired value now we can also add some properties to this rectangle and one of the property is fillet or the rounded edges so let's start this rectangle and now look at the command line so we have these multiple options here i'll select the fillet and now i'll enter one as the fillet radius so we'll learn about fillets later on in the next module and for this example i'll simply make a normal rectangle with a fillet of one unit so now we have specified the fillet value simply specify the first corner and now when you start making the rectangle you'll notice that the rounded corners will be formed automatically and the radius of these corners or the vertices will be one unit and that's the fillet which we have applied so you can click anywhere in the drawing area to make the rectangle or once again you can enter add length comma width to make the rectangle of desired value so i'll simply erase it and i will change the values once again so i'll go to fill it again and i'll change the value back to zero and now i'll make another rectangle like this so if you want to make a rectangle with some width that also you can do so for that i'll select the rectangle tool again and now here we have an option of width so let's select this width and apply a width of 0.5 units and now click at a point to start the rectangle and then click at another point to end it and now here we have this rectangle with some thickness or some width and we'll also learn about this polyline width later on in this course so we again need to start the rectangle tool select the width option and change the width value back to zero and here we have the normal rectangle so let's now erase it so in this way we can make rectangle with variety of different options in autocad in this video i will tell you about the polygon tool of autocad so a polygon is simply a closed geometry which is made up of a minimum of three line segments and a maximum of infinite number of line segments so technically a circle is the largest polygon with infinite number of sides and a triangle is a smallest polygon with three sides so in autocad you can make a polygon with a minimum of three sides which is a triangle and a maximum of 1024 sides and i guess 1024 side is more than enough for making any kind of polygon in autocad so we can start making polygon from the tool here on the draw panel so when you expand the flyout you'll see this polygon tool here now after starting the polygon tool you'll see on the command line we have an option here which says we need to enter number of sides so you can enter any value between 3 and 1024 so let's enter 5 and press enter so we are making a pentagon now and now you need to specify the center of polygon so click anywhere in the drawing area to specify the center and now look at the command line and command line now prompts you to choose 
one of the options either inscribed in a circle or circumscribed about a circle so if a polygon is inscribed in a circle then that polygon will look something like this so here we have this circle and the polygon will be included in the circle in such a way that the vertices of polygon will touch the circumference of the circle but if the polygon is circumscribed about a circle then the polygon will be outside the circle and the midpoint of the line segments of polygon will touch the circumference of the circle so in the first case i'll select this inscribed in a circle and now here we have it so in this case you can simply see that my cursor is on one of the vertex of this polygon and the imaginary circle is passing through all of these five vertices of this polygon so now we need to enter the radius of that circle within which this polygon is inscribed so I'll enter 10 as the radius and press enter so here we have this polygon now the circle which is passing through all of these vertices is the circle with radius of 10 unit so now let's move it here and now let's select the polygon tool again and once again i'll enter 5 as number of sides and now specify the center point and now i'll select circumscribed about circle in this case and now you'll notice that instead of vertices the cursor is now at the midpoint of the line segment or you can say that the cursor is at the midpoint of one of the sides of this polygon so now you need to click anywhere to specify the size of this polygon or you can also enter the radius so in this case also let's enter 10 as the radius and now we are entering the radius of this circle which is inside the polygon and the midpoint of the sides are touching the circle so here we have the same polygon which is inscribed in a circle of radius 10 and here we have the polygon which is circumscribed about a circle of radius 10 unit so we have one more method of making the polygon and using that method you can make a polygon with a known value of its side length so let's say that we know the length of the side of this polygon and we want to make a cyclic polygon in such a way that all the sides of that polygon are of that length which we specify so for that you can select the polygon tool and now once again enter number of sides and let's say that in this case we want to enter six as number of sides and press enter now specify the center of polygon to make either inscribed or circumscribed polygon or you can simply click on this edge option and using this edge option you can make the desired polygon so now you need to specify the first point of the edge and now you need to enter the second point of the edge length and now let's type 10 and press enter and in this case as you can see that we were not required to add either inscribed or circumscribed option we simply entered the length of one of the edge of this polygon and now all of the edges are of same length which is 10 units so in this way you can make an inscribed circumscribed polygon or a polygon with a known value of its edge length in this video i will tell you about polylines and splines so let's start with the polyline tool so here on draw panel you'll see this polyline tool and when you select it you will find its behavior is very similar to that of a line tool so let's make a geometry with this so i'll click at a point to start the polyline and then click at the next point and then the next point and then the next point and press enter to exit this command so now in this case you can see that we have this geometry which is very similar to the line tool but now let's look at this line command so select it now click at a point and then make a similar geometry but this time I'm using the line tool and now let's see the difference between these two geometries so in the first case when you click on any of the segment the complete segment will be selected but in the second case selecting the segment will only select that segment also we have this additional grip which is quite different from the grips which we have here on the polyline and when you hover your cursor over the polyline grips you'll see this additional menu and we'll learn about this later on in this course so that's one of the basic difference between a polyline and a simple line so in this case the lines are quite separate from each other and in case of polyline they are combined into a single unit now let's erase them 
polyline has also many other properties so let's start this polyline and now i'll click at a point to start the polyline and now look at the command line here we have some other options related to the polyline so i'll just click at the second point somewhere over here and now i'll select the arc option so now once i select the arc option you'll notice that the polyline now changes into an arc and we can directly make an arc shape with this polyline and now it's still in the form of an arc so we'll return it back to the line and for that you need to click on this line option from the command line and now it's back to this line shape so once again i'll just drag this point and click here and now click here and here we have it so using a single command we can make this kind of geometry which has this segment the line segment and also the arc shape and the polyline tool can be used to make it so now let's select this polyline tool and let's look at other options related to the polyline so now i'll click at a point and now look at the command line so here we have this option of half width let's select it and now let's apply a starting half width of 10 unit and press enter and now here we have an option for ending half width let's select 10 also in this case and now look at this shape so now we are able to make this polyline but with a certain width and this is the final shape of polyline so now the half width of this complete polyline is 10 units so the complete width of this polyline will be 20 units so now let's erase this geometry and i'll select the polyline tool again click at a point and now i'll change the half width value to zero for both the cases for the starting and end width and also we have an option of width here so using the width option you can enter the complete width of the polyline so let's say that we want to enter a width of 20 units so simply type 20 press enter and the ending width also 20 and now we have the same results here so using half width we have applied a width of 10 units in between the center line and the periphery or the extreme end of this thickened polyline but in this case we were applying the complete thickness or the complete width of this polyline which was 20 units in this case and here we have the final geometry so here also you need to change these values to their default in order to have a normal behavior of the polyline so now here we have the normal polyline now let's look at this spline tool so using splines you can create some very organic shapes and when you expand the draw panel you'll see we have two spline commands here the spline fit and spline with control vertices so let's select the spline fit now we can click at a point to start the spline then click at the second point third point and so on so this is the spline shape which can be used to make many organic shapes in autocad and now press enter to exit this command and when you click on this spline you'll notice that the points where we clicked we have these grips so at every point where we clicked we'll have this grip on the spline now let's make another spline with spline control vertices so let's select this flyout and select the second option which is spline cv or spline with control vertices now in this case i'll again click at a point and i'll make the spline but in this case if you look closely you'll find that the spline is made in a slightly different way so now let's press enter and let's zoom into this spline and now you'll notice that all the points where we clicked will see this grip and the spline is not touching the points where we have clicked except for the starting and end point so we have clicked at this point then this then this and then this point now if you want to change the type of this spline if you want to make it a spline of this type then you can change it using this grip so click on this down pointing grip and change it to fit and here we have it this spline fit in a similar way if you want to change the type of this spline using this down pointing grip you can change it to control vertices just like this if you want to change the shape of this spline even further you can use these grips to change its shape and using this control vertices spline you'll have more control over the curvature or the geometry of this spline and in this case also you can select these grips to further modify the shape of these splines so this was all about polyline and spline command of autocad 
In this video, I will tell you about the point and revision cloud tools of AutoCAD. So I'll start with the point tool and in order to make a point in AutoCAD, you need to use its command equivalent, which is PO or point. So let's type PO on command line and press enter. Now click at a point and here we have it the point is made now in order to make another point simply press enter or spacebar to repeat the last command and click again and you can repeat this process a couple of times to make multiple points here in the drawing area so now we have a couple of points here in this drawing area but the points are very small almost they are of the size of a single pixel and they are not clearly visible in order to make them visible you can change their style or their type and you can change that using the p type command so let's type p type on command line and press enter so this will open this point style window and from here you can change the type of point Currently, we have the single pixel type of point selected. Let's change it to this one and now click OK. Don't change any other variable here and simply click OK. And now here we have it, the different point styles and now they are quite visible. So let's now move to the revision clouds. So revision clouds are the geometries that are used in the drawing to indicate the revision areas. And in AutoCAD, you can make revision cloud with a couple of different ways. So here we have this rectangular, the polygonal and the freehand revision cloud. So you can use any of these options. So I'll start with the rectangular revision cloud. So let's select it. And now let's say that we want to make a revision cloud somewhere over this area of the drawing. So for that, I'll click at this point and now I'll make a simple revision cloud just like this here. So now here we have this revision cloud although the arcs are very small in this revision cloud that will also take care of and now after adding the revision cloud you can add any node. So in this case as you have seen that the arc length is very small we need to modify it. So let's do this with another revision cloud. So I'll click on this draw panel to expand it select the revision cloud and now look at the command line so here we have an option of arc length so let's select it and now the minimum length of arc is set to 0.5 so let's change this value to two units and now specify the maximum value as five and press enter now we'll make another revision cloud so here we'll add it so let's click at this point and now you can see the clear difference so the arcs in this revision cloud are quite visible and the minimum size of the arc is 2 unit and the maximum size is 5 unit as we have specified. So let's now erase both of these revision clouds and let's look at other options of revision cloud. So once again I'll go to this draw panel and I'll select the same revision cloud option. Now here we have some other options. For example, we have the rectangular which we have already seen. We also have a polygonal revision cloud. So let's select this polygonal. Now let's assume that we want to include this object and this object in our revision cloud. So for that we can make a polygon just like this. So click at a point here. Now click at this point, then this point and make a revision cloud to include only these two objects. And in this way we can make the revision cloud. Now press enter and here we have the final revision cloud. We also have one more type of revision cloud and that's a freehand revision cloud. So let's press enter to repeat the revision cloud command. You can also go to this draw panel and repeat the command. But the quick way is simply pressing enter key or the space bar and it will repeat the last command. So now we have already seen the polygonal. Let's look at the freehand. And in this case, you can make a freehand sketch and click at a point to start the freehand cloud and now make a sketch just like this. And when you reach the starting point, the cloud will automatically finish and the completely closed loop will be formed just like this. You can also change the type of revision cloud using the same option. So let's press enter. And now here we have a style option. So let's click on style. And we have already selected the normal and these are the normal revision clouds. Let's select calligraphy. And here we have a different kind of revision cloud, the calligraphy type of revision cloud. So let's now press enter again and let's select the modify option. So now using this modify option, you can modify any existing revision cloud. For example, let's assume that in this case, we want to include these two objects as well in our revision cloud. So for that, I can select the modify and now I'll select the polyline which we want to modify. So obviously this is the revision cloud which we want to modify and the revision clouds are made up of polylines. So I'll click on this revision cloud and now let's start 
making another one so i'll click at this point and then i'll click at this point so now we have included both of these but we also need to remove this part so simply click on this part and the part will be removed and now we have it perfectly in order and we don't want any changes so simply press enter and here we have the final revision cloud so in this way you can make many revision clouds different kind of revision clouds in autocad and even you can modify them and change their type in this video i will tell you about the construction line and array command of autocad so construction lines are simply lines which are used for helping to make other geometries and they are infinite lines so to make the construction line go to the draw panel expand it and now select this option here so here we have this construction line you can also use its command equivalent x line now in order to make this construction line simply click at a point to start it and now click at the second point so in this case you'll see that we have an infinite line and you can click at any point to add this line so i'll click at this point and once again i'll click at this point so now we have these two construction line now press enter to escape this command and here we have a vertical and a horizontal construction line now let's assume that we also want to add a ray here and a ray is simply another construction line but it only starts from a point and goes in a direction and in case of construction line it starts at a point and goes in both the directions so let's now expand the draw panel select the ray tool click at this point and now you'll notice that this ray is going only in one direction so you can click at any point to place it and now press enter again to escape this command these kind of geometries are quite helpful in making walls or, or the exterior boundaries of certain objects and after making the geometries you can trim the remaining portions to make the geometries so when you select the construction line tool you'll see there is an option of offset so selecting this option will allow you to create another construction line at certain distance from the original one so let's say that we want to make another construction line at a distance of 10 units so let's type 10 press enter now select the first construction line and click on the direction on which you want to make another construction line and here we have it so now we have another construction line in the upper direction so in a similar way if you want to make the construction line in this direction simply select it and now click downwards and here we have it so in this way using this offset tool you can make multiple construction lines at certain offset distance from the original one and we'll learn about this offset tool later on in the next module also okay so now let's look at the question which is related to this module so here in this case you need to make this drawing using only the commands which are taught in this module i will start with the circle command so let's go to circle and click anywhere in the drawing area and make the first circle with radius of two units so let's type two and press enter now press enter again to repeat the circle tool and I'll go to the same center point now I'll make another circle with radius of 5 units and press enter now we have these two concentric circles now let's start with the line tool so I'll click on line and now click at this quadrant and if the quadrant is not visible then you can click on this object snap option and right beside that there is this small arrow so just click on it and turn on this quadrant although this is a tool which we'll learn later on but a little bit of knowledge of this tool is very helpful in making these kind of drawings so you can turn on quadrant to see that point now we need to incline this line at an angle of 45 degrees so let's type angle sign and since this line is inclining in the downward direction we need to enter minus 45 and press enter okay so there we have it now the length of this line is 20 units so let's type 20 and press enter now move it in the downward direction and enter a length of 5 units and press enter so there we have it now let's press enter to exit this command and repeat the same process for the second side so i'll press enter i'll go to the next quadrant and in this case i'll again type angle sign and now i'll type an angle of 225 degrees so let's type 225 and press enter so there we have it 
the angle inclined to 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal line. Once again, we need to enter a length of 20 units, so type 20 and press enter. Now move downwards, enter a length of 5 and press enter. Now join it with this existing point and press enter again. Now press enter again to repeat the line tool and join these two points. There we have it. Now we only need to add these two small circles, the circles which were here and here. And in order to do that, I'll start with line and click at a point, move it in left direction and enter the length 6 and press enter. Press enter again to exit it and press enter again to start it. Now click at this point and make another line with length 6 and press enter twice. Now go to the circle tool, click on this end point and make a circle with radius of 1 unit. Press enter, press enter again, go to this point, make another circle with radius 1 and press enter. Now we can erase these two lines. These are no, no longer required. And there we have it, our final geometry as per requirement. In this video, we will learn about making selection sets in AutoCAD. So in AutoCAD, you can make selection of objects in many different ways and we have been doing it in the previous lessons also. So the most basic way of selecting objects is by a simple window and a crossing window. So here we have some objects here in the drawing area. Now let's say that we want to select objects here now in this part so in order to make a selection you can click on the left side of the screen so i'm clicking on the left side of the screen and i'm stretching my cursor towards right and now in this case we have this solid window and everything which is included in this solid window will be included in our selection set now if you expand this window you'll notice that we are trying to include more objects but when you look at this rectangle here you'll notice that it is not included in our selection set even though this window is touching it so the only criteria for objects to be selected with this window is it should be completely included in this window which this rectangle is not fulfilling and that's why it's not added to our selection set so let's now click here and everything has been selected except the rectangle and the text because they were partially inside and partially outside now let's repeat the process and we'll repeat it with another window so now i'll click on the right side of the drawing area and i'll move my cursor towards left and now we have this dashed window and in this case you'll notice that everything which is completely inside this window is obviously selected and it is included in our selection set but also the objects which are touching this window are selected and this rectangle and the text here are also included in the selection set although they are partially inside and partially outside but still they are selected because they are touching the window so this is the second way of selecting objects so you can use either of these options and we have many other options also for making selection so the next one is window polygon and to make a window polygon click at any point to start the selection set and now look at the command line here we have this window polygon option so click on this window polygon and now we can make a polygon to include some selective objects for example let's say that we want to include only l4 and l7 in this case here just like this so we can make this kind of selection window and if you want to include acv block also so you can make this window something like this and now in this window acv is also included but we are obviously leaving the l1 geometry here so in this way you can create different kind of selection windows now press enter and the objects will be selected just like this in a similar way we can make a crossing polygon also so click anywhere in the drawing area to start the selection set and now click on this crossing polygon option from the command line and now we can make a crossing polygon which is similar to the window polygon but in this case all the objects which even touch the boundaries of this crossing polygon will be included in the selection set and obviously in this case the ACV text and this block are simply touching the boundaries and they are also included in the selection set so now so now press enter and here we have it the objects are now selected 
so we have one more selection set here and for that I'll again click at any point here to start it and we have this first option fence now using fence you can create a fence and whatever object is touched by this fence will be selected so in this case you can see that this fence is simply touching the objects and all of these objects are now included in our selection set now press enter and here we have it the objects are included in the selection set in the AutoCAD 2018 version, AutoCAD added an off-screen selection and the off-screen selection is helpful for selecting this kind of long geometries. So let's say that we want to make a selection by zooming this drawing and we just want to include our selection somewhere from here. Now we are including the objects in our selection set and along with inclusion of objects, we are also moving the drawing towards right. So now we are scrolling it, we are panning it here and now we are including many objects. Now, let's click here. Now all of these objects which are present in the screen are obviously selected. But in the previous versions of AutoCAD, if you would have panned your drawing, you'll find that these objects would be removed from the selection set but not anymore with AutoCAD 2018 version. So with AutoCAD 2018 version all the objects which are not present in the screen will also be selected if you have included them in the selection set. So now when you zoom out you'll notice that the complete set of objects are included in the selection set even when they were not present on the screen while making the selection. So that's a new enhancement in AutoCAD 2018 version. So this was all about creating selection sets in AutoCAD and using these selection set you can make some intelligent selections even in the crowded drawings. In this video I will tell you about move and copy tools of AutoCAD. So here we have this rectangle and we have a circle here on one of the vertices. Now let's say that we want to move this circle on the second vertex here. So for that we can select the move tool from the modify panel. So select the move tool, now click on the circle, press enter and now specify the base point. As you can see here the command line prompts you to specify the base point. So the base point will be the point from where the object will be picked. Now click here and you will notice that the object will now move along with our cursor. Now look at the command line and it now prompts you to specify the second point. So the second point will be the destination point where you want to move it and click there to move the object. So that's quite simple. Now we have a copy tool here. So using the copy tool you can make copies of this original object. Now let's say that we want to make copies of this circle on the remaining three vertices. For that simply select the circle, press enter. And once again select the base point. So the base point will be this midpoint in this case as well. And now click at the destination point which is this one. And now click again on the destination point and click again on the destination point. And now when you want to exit this command simply press enter and here we have it. The copies of the original object on these three vertices. If you want you can also make multiple copies of a single object using the copy tool. So let's make a simple rectangle here just like this and now let's assume that we want to make six copies of this rectangle at a particular distance for that i'll select the copy tool and now select the object and press enter now specify the base point so this will be the point from where we want to pick the objects and now as you can see that we only have a single copy of this object now you can make multiple copies using the array tool here we have this array tool so click on this array and now enter number of items so we'll add six as number of items now press enter and here we have it we have six objects instead of one as copies and now you can click at any point to place all of these objects and they will be placed at uniform distance now if you want to apply the complete distance the distance between the first and the last object then simply select this fit option and now you can see that our cursor moves to the last object and we can apply the complete distance and based upon that all the objects will be equally placed. So I'll click somewhere at this point and here we have it. Now simply press enter to escape this command and here we have it. The multiple copies of a single object. So in this way you can use move and copy tool in AutoCAD. In this video I will tell you about the rotate command of AutoCAD. So here we have this simple line object. So let's first look at this line object and if you want to rotate this object 
to any particular angle you can do that with the rotate command so on the modify panel here you will find this rotate tool so click on this rotate and now select the object which you want to rotate and press enter now the command line will prompt you to specify the base point and the base point will be the fixed point or the pivot point about which the object will rotate so in the first case let's select this corner as the base point and now you'll notice that the object will move along with our cursor so you can click anywhere in the drawing area to place this object and it will be rotated to that angle or you can add an exact value of angle using the command line so let's say that we want to rotate it to an angle of 30 degrees so for that i'll type 30 and now press enter and here we have it the object is now rotated to an angle of 30 degrees and the rotation simply means that if you draw a single line then the angle between this line and this line will be 30 degrees in anti-clockwise direction so that's the direction which is always positive in autocad now let's say that we want to make this line in the downward direction so for that i'll simply add minus 30 instead of 30 so let's press ctrl z for a couple of times and now select the rotate tool and click on this line press enter select the same base point and instead of 30 let's enter minus 30 press enter and now you can see that the line is rotated to this angle which is below the horizontal line so let's press ctrl z to get back to the original condition now in both of these cases you have noticed that the original line is removed and it is rotated to that angle now what if we also want to retain this line and we also want to make a copied line at the required angle for that we can select the rotate tool select the object press enter specify base point and now select the copy option from the command line and now enter the angle so let's say that we want to enter 45 and press enter so in this case the original line is also retained and a copy will be rotated to the required angle now let's look at one more case and in this situation we'll change the base point so let's select the rotate tool select the object press enter and now in this case i'll select the midpoint as the base point and now you'll notice that the object will be rotated from that point and you can obviously add the angle let's say 60 and here we have it the rotated line let's now erase it so now let's look at this case in this situation we have this line which is inclined to this horizontal line and we don't know the angle to which this line is inclined now if you want to rotate this line to an angle of let's say 60 degrees with respect to this line so that the final angle is 60 degrees plus whatever angle this is then we can use the reference option and for that select the rotate tool select the object press enter select the base point select the reference tool and now specify the reference angle which is zero in this case so let's type zero and press enter now we need to enter the final angle which is 60 and press enter so now the final angle for this line will be 60 degrees plus whatever the angle of the original line was so in the initial case the line was inclined to an angle of 16 degrees so the final angle will be 76 let's check it so I'll select the angle tool click on these two lines and yes we have this inclined to an angle of 76 degrees and if you want to verify that let's press ctrl z for a couple of times and let's check the original angle so I'll click on these two lines and yes we have this line inclined to an angle of 16 degrees so even without knowing the angle of these lines you can change its direction or you can rotate them to whatever angle you want from their own position you can use this reference option to rotate this line to any final angle also for example in this case we again don't know the angle of this line let's assume that we don't know and we want to rotate this line to a final angle of 30 degrees with respect to this horizontal line for that i'll select this rotate command now select the line and press enter now specify the base point and now once again select the reference option but in this case we will specify the reference angle and for that i'll click at this point and then click at this point 
now you'll notice that the cursor will move along with this line and now we need to enter the final angle up to which you want to rotate it so we want to rotate it to an angle of 30 degrees so type 30 press enter so now the line has been rotated to an angle of 30 degrees with respect to this horizontal line and it hardly matters whatever the initial angle was so we can also check this so let's select the angle option select this line and this line and yes we have an angle of 30 degrees here so in this way you can rotate a line to any final angle even without knowing its initial angle with respect to the positive side of x-axis in this video i will tell you about the offset command of autocad so here we have these two simple geometries and we will use offset command on them so from the modify panel select this offset tool now look at the command line it prompts you to specify an offset distance so let's select two as the offset distance and press enter now you need to select the object which you want to offset so in this case i'll select this line and now look at the second line so now a copy of this line has been made here on this direction because our cursor is towards this side but if i move my cursor here a new copy will be made on this side so you can simply click on this side of the line and a copy will be made like this now if you want to create another copy of this object simply click on this line and click here in a similar way you can keep creating copies of this line on either side using the offset tool and the gap between all of these lines is two unit so let's now press escape key and press ctrl z now let's say that we want to make multiple copies of this line without selecting the offset tool again and again for that select the offset tool now specify the offset distance which is two in this case and now select the object and from the command line select this multiple option now you can see that our command is still in continuation even after clicking so i clicked and still we have this command and now you can keep on clicking on the side where you want to create multiple offsets you can repeat the process for this side as well so now let's press escape key again and let's press ctrl z now if you don't want to specify any particular distance for offset you can use the through option so select the offset tool and now here we have this through option so let's select it and now select the object and now you'll notice that the offset geometry will follow our cursor so we can simply click here to make the geometry and you can select it once again and make another copy at some random distance dynamically by clicking anywhere in the drawing area now again press escape key to exit the command and press ctrl z to get back here now if you want to create an offset by erasing the source object that also you can do and for that once again select the offset tool and now from here command line select this erase option and here you'll notice that erase source object after offsetting option has been set to no that's why the copy of the original object is made and without erasing this object so i'll select yes in this case and now once again i'll repeat the process so i'll type 2 as the offset distance click on this object and now click at particular distance and here we have it the original object has been deleted and an offset copy has been made here so you can again go back to the offset command and go to the erase and change it to no once again and now if you offset the original object will also be retained you can use offset command on this geometry as well and for that i'll once again select the offset tool and now here also i'll specify the distance so let's specify one as the distance the offset distance press enter and now click on the object and now click outside and you'll notice that a copy will be made outside and now let's select the original object and click inside so we have two copies one outside and one inside and the distance between all of these object is one unit so the distance between this rectangle and this one is one unit on all the sides similarly the distance between this line segment and this line segment of the rectangle is also one unit so let's now erase both of them and now let's look at some other options related to the offset tool so here the offset is making the similar geometry which we have made here but if you want to apply rounded corners on the offset geometry you can do that by changing the offset gap type system variable so let's type offset gap type and press enter 
and now here you'll notice that the default value of this offset gap type variable is set to 0 let's change this value to 1 and press enter now we'll again make the offset so select the offset tool specify offset distance as 1 press enter and now click on the object and now click outside and now we have a different geometry here in this case the fillet has been applied or the rounded corners are applied with a radius of one unit so that's the same radius which is equal to the gap of this object or the offset gap in a similar way you can also apply a chamfer and chamfer is simply a straight line so let's erase this geometry and let's change the value of offset gap type system variable so let's type offset gap type press enter and now change this value to 2 and press enter now once again I'll select the offset tool again I'll select 1 as offset distance and now in this case instead of fillet a chamfer has been applied so I'll once again type offset gap type system variable and change its value to default 0 and now we can make the normal geometries using the offset tool so once again I'll select offset I'll select the through option and now click on the object and now you can see that we have a normal geometry here just like this